SCP-039 Monkey Brain Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Living SCP-039 instances are to be contained in Site-77's Wilderness Observation Chamber 2B. The interior and exterior of WOC-2B must be monitored by two security guards at all times. WOC-2 is to be inspected weekly for sabotage and contraband. Deceased instances are in refrigerated storage and may be accessed for study upon request. SCP-039-A is data expunged. Description SCP-039 consists of 23 proboscis monkeys, which have been subject to radical anatomical changes. These alterations are summarized below. Eyes have been removed. New bone growth has filled eye sockets. No remnants of eyelids or eyebrows remain. Only smooth skin. Extreme alterations to the mouth. Oral opening is no longer present. No remnants of lips remain. Only smooth skin. Jawbone has been fused in place by new bone growth along the joints. Teeth, tongue, gums, and palate are absent, having been replaced by a large deposit of adipose tissue. Removal of digestive system. Esophagus, stomach, gallbladder, intestines, and bladder have all been replaced with adipose tissue formations of similar shape and volume. Anal orifice has been sealed by a new skin growth, leaving no remnants of the anus. It is not clear how SCP-039 instances obtain nutrition and dispose of waste, or survive without doing so. Enhancement of auditory, tactile, and olfactory senses. Both absolute and difference thresholds are significantly lower than those of the baseline species. These enhancements allow SCP-039 to effectively navigate their environment despite lack of sight. Instances have been observed tapping on objects when navigating unfamiliar surroundings. This behavior has been theorized to be a form of rudimentary echolocation, but this is yet to be proven. Intelligence Enhancements SCP-039 score consistently higher on all provided cognitive tests than their non-anomalous equivalents. SCP-039 are capable of reproduction. At time of writing, five instances of SCP-039 have been born since containment. SCP-039 show a very close bond among their species, with newborns often being cared for by all capable adults. New instances are born with the same anatomical anomalies as their parents. Despite this, testing has not identified any genetic divergence from baseline species in SCP-039 instances. SCP-039 communicate via touch in a complex series of nasal vocalizations, many of which have not been observed in non-anomalous proboscis monkeys. Original instances also possess a rudimentary understanding of spoken English. This knowledge is not passed on to newborns, but they do naturally learn some English from exposure to Foundation personnel. Instances of SCP-039 have demonstrated the ability to operate mechanical tools, and to perform various complex tasks primarily related to automobile construction and maintenance. This knowledge does not appear to be innate, as newborn instances do not possess it. Addendum SCP-039-1 Recovery Log SCP-039 were recovered in 1998 when Foundation forces raided a Prometheus lab facility approximately 25 kilometers north-northwest of Redacted Nevada. The facility was found to have been abandoned an unknown amount of time prior to Prometheus Labs' collapse. Recovered objects of note include two automobiles, abandoned in the parking lot outside, a third automobile, partially disassembled in a cargo bay, an assortment of power tools, spare parts, paints, and other auto maintenance implements, an assortment of veterinary anesthetics, surgical implements, and data expunged, located in an operating room, 20 small cages, presumably for the purpose of containing SCP-039. All cages were empty and partially dismantled, with the doors removed. Two larger cages, likewise empty and dismantled, containing chimpanzee hair and feces. The frozen remains of a desiccated SCP-039 instance, which lacked a nose or nasal passages in addition to the typical anomalies. The remains of three adult males, identified via dental analysis as Allen Redacted, Damien Redacted, and Cole Redacted. 
All three individuals had been killed by severe blunt trauma, and remains bore pre- and post-mortem bite marks corresponding to chimpanzee dentition. The Personal Journal of Cole Redacted, see Addendum 2. 18 Instances of SCP-039 SCP-039-A Addendum SCP-039-2 Personal Journal of Cole Redacted Some entries appear to notate the early prototyping stage of SCP-039's development. These entries are reproduced below, with portions irrelevant to SCP-039 excised for brevity. Document 039 this is probably unnecessary since Damien keeps track of all the sciencey stuff, but I need something to do. Dear Diary, I should have brought more books to read. No scientific notes were recovered from the facility. Well, we got the monkeys today. Not the monkeys we wanted, mind you. These are freaking proboscis monkeys. I asked that Werner guy what he was thinking when he got these things and he just shrugged. Said we didn't specify what kind of monkeys we wanted. What kind of weirdo hears monkey and thinks, yeah, I'll get the fat ones with big noses. We wanted Reese's macaques, just like literally every other research facility on the planet. Now we have to refit everything for 20 monkeys that are twice as big as we expected, or else stick them in cages that are too small. I wonder how we got these things, but I'm kind of afraid to ask. Dude says he's an actor, but I never heard of him. Maybe he's in German movies or something, with a name like that. Imagine having exotic animal smuggling as your side job. What a weirdo. Including the deceased instance, only 19 instances of SCP-039 were recovered from the facility. In 1999, the 20th instance was discovered in SCP-1328, living in an otherwise abandoned house belonging to the Red Actors Trope. The monkeys are doing fine, passing all the tests way better than they did when they could see. Damien says it's probably because they can remember it better, but I still think at least some of it has to do with not being distracted. I know I think better with my eyes closed. Took the nose off one of the monkeys today to see what would happen. I just figured it would suffocate, but it didn't. Guess it gets its air from the same place as its food now. Makes me wonder just how much we could take out. If it's not breathing, does it really need a heart? That's about the only internal organ it's got left at this point. Pulling the heart won't improve the intelligence any though, so there'd be no point. Just curious. The one with no nose isn't moving anymore. We thought he was dead at first till we checked for a pulse. Poor guy must be depressed. I'd be pretty unhappy too, I guess, if... I couldn't see or talk to any of my friends, but I could still hear them around me. If he doesn't shape up soon, we'll have to dissect him, see if we can figure out what happened. We're going to leave the noses on the rest of them so this doesn't happen again. Called Werner. Ordered some chimps. I made sure he knew exactly what animal I was talking about so he doesn't show up with a fucking baboon or something. Dissected the noseless one today. Couldn't find anything obviously weird brain was still intact and everything. Oh well. Damien said the problem might be specific to the species since the nose is so important to the social structure. I didn't know about that since I figured the eyes and mouth were pretty damn important too, but we won't know for sure until we try it on different species. Werner brought two chimps, both males. They're bigger than I expected. Now that we're done with the monkeys, we're handing them over to Alan. He's going to try to teach them some tricks to impress potential donors. Alan says the monkeys are learning quick. I question the wisdom of teaching monkeys to use power tools, but Alan says they don't seem interested in getting up to mischief. Monkey business. <laughs> anymore. Must be the procedure. Decided to start with the nose instead this time to see if that monkey really freaked out because it couldn't communicate or because sanity is somehow dependent on the nose or some shit. Probably should have tested that on the monkeys, but we were too busy trying to get out of feeding them to be properly scientific about it. I wish our grant request hadn't been denied. Then we'd have enough money for some trial and error and we wouldn't have to rely on some actor for our test subjects. I don't like the chimps. The 
monkeys were all right because they're so funny looking, but the chimps are a little too much like hairy people for me. It feels like they're actually seeing me when they look, if that makes any sense. Doesn't help that I know they're smarter now. I don't think they like me either. Can't wait till we take their eyes tomorrow. In other news, Alan actually got the monkeys to change the tire on his car. They looked funny doing it like a fairy little pit crew. These must be the smartest monkeys on the planet by now. And Alan says they're still learning. The monkeys are basically geniuses at this point. Alan had them wax his car, do an oil change, and some other car stuff that I don't understand. Hopefully that'll convince the guys upstairs to reconsider our grant. Maybe give us what we need to move on to human experimentation. If that doesn't work, we might at least be able to sell these monkeys to MC and D or somebody is a cheaper, cheaper alternative to real auto mechanics. One of those chimps tried to fucking bite me today. I'm not going back in there until we take the mouths those bastards can starve for all I care. Damien can handle it. He still doesn't want to take the mouths yet since those are their last facial features and he's afraid the same thing will happen to the monkey without a nose will happen to them. Got a call from Werner today. Said he had one more ape for us. I asked him what he was talking about, but he just laughed. Said he'd be here tomorrow and hung up. Doesn't he know we're already struggling? We don't have space for another damn monkey, much less food. Further information regarding SCP-039-A is restricted to personnel level 3 and higher. Addendum 039-3 Information pertaining to SCP-039-A Special Containment Procedures SCP-039-A is held in a standard humanoid containment chamber adjusted to accommodate its blindness. Description SCP-039-A is an adult human male named Jacob Redacted. Via the same process that created SCP-039, SCP-039-A's eyes, nose, mouth, and associated organ systems have all been removed. It has experienced similar enhancements to its intelligence and remaining senses, as well as other psychological alterations. The following excerpt is from Colt Redacted's journal relate to SCP-039-A. It's a human. The ape Werner was talking about? It's a fucking person. A guy named Jake. Some crackhead he scraped off the street, probably just promised him a bunch of drugs to lure him into that creepy red van Werner drives and then dumped him on us. I know our eventual goal here is to boost human intelligence, but we're not ready for human experimentation at this stage. Damien disagrees, says this is a huge opportunity. If we can pull off a successful human prototype, then we're bound to get our grant approved, right? He's right, but that doesn't change the fact that this is a whole new level of illegal, not to mention dangerous. Not sure if I want to do it just yet, not without approval from upstairs. Fucking Damien. Last night that asshole went behind my back and operated on Jake. Took his whole damn face off, all at once. Jake's lucky he didn't drop dead right there from the shock. He still hasn't woken up yet, so it might still happen. I told Damien I'll feed him to the fucking chimps if he does this again. I am not prepared to dispose of a body. Shouldn't be hard out here in the middle of this damn desert, but still. Jake woke up today, already moving around and everything. It's kind of creepy how fast he recovered and how calm he is about the whole thing. I guess he knew what he signed up for, but you'd think a guy would at least be a little weirded out that he wakes up without a face. Here's something weird. Jake says he isn't craving drugs anymore. He still had some on him when he got here, crack and meth or I don't know what, but he wants us to get rid of it. According to him, he'd normally be wanting a fix right now, but he hasn't felt the urge since the operation. I don't know how taking his face off cured his addiction. It enhances intelligence, yeah, but it shouldn't alter your brain chemistry like that. Damien's as stumped as me. He's been knee-deep in the old-ass book that gave him this crazy idea in the first place trying to figure it out. I would offer to take a look at it, but I don't speak Latin. No books matching this description were recovered from the facility. Jake wanted to see the monkeys today, so 
despite my better judgment, we took him to Alan. He was training them to build a car engine, and they were doing a great job, believe it or not, but they could tell somebody new was in the room. I guess they smelled him? A couple of them came over and he squatted down to pet them. Damien warned him that the monkeys aren't usually very friendly, but they didn't seem to mind. Reached up to touch his face and started snorting a whole lot. Seemed kind of excited, I guess because they found a human who's like them. The whole thing was really weird. Now, he wants to see the chimps, but I said no. We can't afford to let our only human test subject get mauled to death. Damien does think we could probably take their mouths off, though, since Jake didn't go nuts like the monkey. I guess we'll do that tomorrow, unless something weird happens with Jake. Damien doesn't want to do the chimps until after they meet Jake. Says he wants to see if they make any unusual vocalizations. I don't know what he expects to see, but he says that after the way the monkeys acted yesterday, it might be worth checking out. I said it's still too dangerous, but Damien got kind of shitty about it and said the chimps only acted aggressive around me because I don't like them. Said I didn't have to come if I didn't want to, so I won't. I hope they throw shit at him. Well, this is creepy. Damien swears that Jake and the chimps actually communicated. They did the same face touching thing as the monkeys and then they were hooting and stuff and he was nodding his head like he understood. Jake says he doesn't know what Damien is talking about, and I'm not sure what to think. It sounds crazy. But then again, so does trusting a guy with no face. I'm starting to think we're in over our heads here. Knew we should have waited for that grant to start human testing. I wish fucking Werner hadn't brought us this guy. Oh, one more thing. Alan was having the monkeys repaint his car. Starting to think he just did this as an excuse to get his car souped up for free and one of them snuck off with a couple of tools. Took a while to notice he was gone, but me and Alan tracked the little guy down pretty easily, hanging around outside the chip pen. Not sure where he left the tools, but we can look for them tomorrow. When Mobile Task Force Epsilon-6 entered the facility, they discovered SCP-039-A living in what was presumably its quarters, sharing living spaces with several instances of SCP-039. Initial interactions were complicated by SCP-039-A's inability to speak, but once communication and writing was established, it willingly entered custody. Addendum 039-4 Interviews The following is an interview of SCP-039-A conducted by researcher Lee Roy Carlson. It communicated its answers by typing on a computer. Begin log Researcher Carlson Good morning, SCP-039-A. SCP-039-A waves at Researcher Carlson. I'm Researcher Lee Roy Carlson. SCP-039-A offers Researcher Carlson a handshake, which she accepts. I'd like to ask you a few questions about what happened at the Prometheus Labs facility. SCP-039-A nods. First, how do you know we're in Ergolipsy? SCP-039-A shrugs. He picked me up in Reno, pulled up beside me in the street in a red van, asked me if I wanted to become human. I asked him what the hell he was talking about, and he told me there were some guys out in the desert somewhere who could fix me, make it so I never needed food or water ever again. Make me smarter, too. Sounded too good to be true, like you said, but I figured I didn't have much to lose. Besides, he had drugs. so. I got in that creepiest van with him, and he took me out to that place in the desert. Do you know anything else about him? SCP-039-A shakes its head. We didn't exactly have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Did he say why he was interested in this project? Nope. Just said he was helping those guys at the lab find test subjects. I see. Is there anything else you know about him? He said he was an actor... Oh, and the van had Florida plates. Have you had any contact with Galipsy since he brought you to the facility? Nope. Are you sure? There seem to be some objects missing from the laboratory. And two chimpanzees. I'm sure. The chimps left on their own after they killed those guys. Figured out how to open a door, ran off into the desert. 
probably died out there since they still needed food and water. Then why didn't you leave the facility? Hey, just because I don't need water doesn't mean I can't have heat stroke. Didn't need to worry about finding food or anything, so I decided to stick around. I figured somebody would need me eventually. Too bad it was you guys. Hmm. Do you know anything about any books or research notes that the scientist who operated on you may have had? Nope. Like I said, I was just a test subject. Interesting. While we're on the subject, how exactly did the chimpanzees escape their cage? Beats me. Cole probably forgot to lock the cages or something. Hmm. Even smart people make mistakes. I suppose. No, he's lying. I'm requesting the use of enhanced chemical interrogation techniques. Researcher Carlson. You don't believe me, do you? I'll ask the questions, thanks. Will you? Or are you just going to sit there and write? I'll write as long as I want. Fine then. Take your time. It's not like I have anywhere else to be anyway. You're just going to put me back in my cell when we're done, right? Right. SCP-039-A removes its hand from the keyboard and leans back with them behind its head. Researcher Carlson finishes writing. Okay. SCP-039-A, just one more question. You really enjoy calling me that, don't you? Makes it easier to forget I'm a person. Are you able to communicate with the monkeys? What? The journal we recovered indicates that you may have been able to communicate with them and the altered chimpanzees in some way. That must be Cole's journal. You know he's an idiot, right? Not to mention a dick? He didn't like me, or the chimps. Are you saying that you can't communicate with other SCP-039 instances? I mean, can you communicate with your dog? They're smart animals. Yes, but I can talk to my dog and he can see me. You and the monkeys can't do either of those things. I'd like to go back to my cell now. SCP-039-A crosses its arms. This interview is not over. SCP-039-A does not respond. You're not going to cooperate, are you? SCP-039-A shakes its head. Fine. But this isn't over. End log. Researcher Carlson's request for chemical interrogation is pending Ethics Committee approval, as SCP-039-A's altered physiology, metabolism, and psychology make the effects of nestics and similar drugs on it difficult to predict. Below is the transcript of Researcher Carlson's second interview with SCP-039-A, conducted the following day. Begin log. Researcher Carlson. Hello again, SCP-039-A. SCP-039-A does not respond. I'd like to ask you some questions about the procedure that removed your face. SCP-039-A nods slowly. First, how was it performed? What do you mean? Was it a surgical operation? A thumb? A magical ritual? Were you genetically modified? SCP-039-A shrugs. They didn't tell me the specifics and I was out during the operation. You didn't ask? SCP-039-A shakes his head. It's not like I would have understood the science anyway. They just told me it would make me smarter and I wouldn't have to eat anymore. And that I'd go blind but my hearing would be better so it wouldn't be so bad. And you agreed to this. SCP-039-A nods. You would have to. What makes you say that? Rough estimate. How much money do you spend on food every month? Groceries, restaurants, everything. Uh, a couple hundred bucks? It varies. Now, imagine that you still had those hundred bucks every month. That's more than a thousand a year. What would you buy with that? Something that you want but don't have right now because of your budget. Uh, well... I've been trying to complete my rare coin collection. Cool. So, just think. If you didn't have to eat, you'd have all those rare coins. Well, yeah, but I like eating. Do you? 
or is that just your biological need to eat tricking your brain into enjoying something it doesn't really have a choice about? Of course I like eating. I mean, maybe not always, but when I go to a fancy restaurant or something I do. Okay, fine. Let me put it like this. You want to lose weight, right? What? Researcher Carlson looks down at his body. Just guessing. Most of you people do. Us people? People who can afford to eat. Before I got my face off, I only got to eat if I went to a homeless shelter or fished something out of the trash. But you have the opposite problem, don't you? Eating too much. Well, I suppose so. Now, imagine if you never had to worry about that. If you didn't have to try and fail to exercise self-control when you reach for one more piece of cake. Or one more deep fried whatever. Because you can't eat. But that doesn't bother you because you don't want to anyway. Pretty soon after your operation, your body will naturally reach a healthy weight. But you can still build muscle. Heck, I was skinny as a post before I got rid of my face. Now, look at me. Uh, I think I'll stick with my diet. How about this then? How much time do you spend eating every day? Look, I just want to know more about the procedure. This isn't necessary. You want to know why I volunteer, don't you? I'm trying to explain it to you, or do you not really want to know? <sighs> Fine. Carry on. So how much time do you spend eating? I don't know, maybe an hour total? And how much time do you spend cooking, shopping for food, driving back and forth to the place where you shop, bringing in the groceries, putting them away? Or when you go to a restaurant, how much time do you waste deciding where to go? Driving out there, waiting for your table, waiting to order, waiting for the food, waiting for the check. Then, after you eat, how much time do you spend shitting every day? How much of your life is wasted sitting on a toilet, wiping your own ass, smelling your own shit like an animal? Do you have any idea how much of your life is wasted fulfilling base biological needs? How much of the stuff you want to do with your life never gets done because you're busy doing what you have to do? I understand that, but I like my face where it is. SCP-039-A shakes its head slowly. Well, maybe if you were in the shoes that I was in, you'd think differently. From where I was, a face was a small price to pay. I don't guess it matters now, though, since I'm in a box. I'm sorry about that, but surely you can understand the kind of uproar that a man with no face would cause if we just let you wander around in public. SCP-039-A hesitates for several seconds, fingers hovering above the keyboard. Do you have any more questions? Well, we're wondering if you've experienced any other psychological changes. The monkeys show much higher cognitive performance than unaltered ones, and we wanted to know if you've experienced anything similar. Definitely. It's a little more complicated than just being smarter, though. How so? Well, it's all about attention. I can hear better now, what with the SCP-039-A gestures at the upper half of its face. But I also listen better, if that makes any sense, because I'm not distracted anymore. I never realized it before, and you probably don't either. I'm not sure anybody can if they still have a face, but... People are always distracted, thinking about a thousand different things, worrying about your job or lack of one in my case, trying to figure out what you're going to have for dinner, where you're going to sleep, how you're going to get your next fix, whatever that is for you. But I don't have to deal with all of that anymore, so I can pay attention, really pay attention, when I'm listening and remember all of it. And then I'm thinking, trying to solve a math problem or something. I can concentrate. Really concentrate. It's like the difference between being sober and being drunk. Speaking of which, the documents we found indicate that you were addicted to drugs before the operation. I was a crackhead before they took my face off, but I haven't craved it even a little bit since the operation. Didn't even withdraw. That's interesting to you, I imagine. Yes, it is. Do you know why this is the case? Not scientifically, 
Seems like Damien and the other guys didn't expect that, but I do know. Intrinsically, spiritually, I can feel it, if that makes any sense. Can you explain this feeling? It's simple, really. It's like what I was talking about with the food. Now that my face is gone, and a whole bunch of my organs too, I don't know which ones exactly, but most of them. I'm cut off from that. From what? Urges. Base instincts. The monkey brain. Before my body craved things. Food, water, sex, drugs, booze. I could barely think. Really think the way I do now. But not anymore. When they removed my face, they removed the monkey. Now it's just me in here. SCP-039-A taps its forehead. Just a rational human being in complete control of himself. End log. Thank you for listening to SCP-039 Monkey Brain by Anonymous and Willet, rewritten by Corthodrastrix. If you enjoyed this SCP, please like and subscribe, and follow the link in the description to the SCP Wiki, and vote it up to support it and the SCP Wiki as a whole.